Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel's so-called Corona cabinet approves a nationwide lockdown for the upcoming Jewish high holiday season. The Kingdom of Bahrain has officially joined its Arab Gulf neighbor, the United Arab Emirates, in announcing its intention to normalize its bilateral relations with the State of Israel. The United States voices its deep concern over Turkey's behavior in the eastern Mediterranean. Israel's so-called Corona cabinet approved a nationwide lockdown last night for the upcoming Jewish high holiday season. The lockdown will begin at the end of this week on Friday at 2 p.m. September the 18th, which marks the eve of the Hebrew calendar's New Year, Rosh Hashanah. The nationwide closure will be enforced until the last day of Sukkot, Hebrew, for the Feast of Tabernacles on October the 11th. Thereafter, the lockdown may be extended even further, pending a situation assessment on the country's morbidity rate and pending the Corona Cabinet's approval. Per the Corona Cabinet's decision, Israelis will not be permitted to stray more than 500 meters from their homes and gatherings will be limited to 10 in a closed space and up to 20 in an open space. Schools will be closed except for special education and boarding schools and prayer services will be permitted in a small format. Furthermore, a decision was made that workplaces will be able to continue to operate in keeping with government-enacted restrictions. However, malls, stores, hotels, swimming pools and gyms will be forced to close. On the other hand, restaurants will only be able to fill takeaway orders. I know that the steps are going to be very difficult for all of us. It's not the day that we're going to be able to do it. We're not going to be able to do it with all of our families. And there will also be some people who are going to be able to do it with other people. Due to the expected economic ramifications, Prime Minister Netanyahu revealed that he instructed Finance Minister Israel Katz to draft another financial aid package for Israelis that are directly impacted by the looming nationwide lockdown. Concluding his televised remarks, the Israeli leader recited a prayer annually read during the Hebrew calendar's New Year, Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> אבינו מלכנו, מנה מגפה מנחלתך, מי ייתן ותפילתנו זו תתגשם. In other news, the Kingdom of Bahrain has officially joined its Arab Gulf neighbor, the United Arab Emirates, in announcing its intention to normalize its relations with the State of Israel. U.S. President Donald Trump, who brokered the historic deal, made the announcement on Friday night after hosting a call between Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu and Bahrain's King Hamad al-Khalifa. In the spirit of peace and cooperation, both leaders also agreed that Bahrain will fully normalize its diplomatic relations with Israel. They will exchange embassies and ambassadors, begin direct flights between their countries, and launch cooperation initiatives across a broad range of sectors, including health, business, technology, education, security, and agriculture. This is a truly historic day. The historic peace announcement, a second in less than a month, has been warmly welcomed by Jerusalem's leadership. It took us a full 26 years from Israel's second peace agreement with an Arab state to the third peace agreement. And now it's taken us only 29 days from the third peace agreement to the fourth. What a change. I want to express my appreciation to His Majesty the King of Bahrain for joining the Circle of Peace and my appreciation for Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed from the United Arab Emirates for working with Israel and the United States to expand the Circle of Peace. I'm looking forward with enormous anticipation to meeting all four countries, Israel, the United States, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain in this great historic moment of peace next Tuesday in Washington, D.C. Similar to the consequences of the normalization of relations between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, 
The Palestinians have once again condemned Jerusalem's rapprochement with the Arab world, with a number of protests erupting both in the Gaza Strip and West Bank. Speaking from the West Bank city of Jericho, Secretary General of the Palestine Liberation Organization, or PLO, Saib Erekat, insisted that it would not matter how many countries normalize their relations with Israel, unless the Palestinian question is resolved, the Jewish state will not know peace. As far as, as we as Palestinians are concerned, they, Israel can bring 193 ambassadors to Tel Aviv. But then what? I am what needs to be solved. I am the problem. They are my problem. I am what needs to be solved. And the only way to have peace in this region is to solve the Palestinian question, is to solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, is to end the Israeli occupation. The PLO Secretary General further insisted that the latest wave of normalization with Israel does not necessarily pertain to peace, but rather it should be regarded as a military alliance. The Bahrain-American-Israeli uh, agreement to normalize uh, relations is now part of a bigger package in the region. It's not about peace, it's not about relations between countries. We are witnessing an alliance, a military alliance being created in the region, maybe they want to call it an Arab-Israel-NATO. Turning now to France, where President Emmanuel Macron stressed that the European Union devised a common agenda to have the sovereignty of EU member states, Greece and Cyprus, respected in light of Turkey's aggressive behavior in the eastern Mediterranean. Speaking alongside the leaders of Greece, Cyprus and Italy, President Macron further asserted that Europe will not stand idly by in the face of unilateral provocations. Nous avons défini, comme nous l'avions fait au cours de l'été avec la chancelière fédérale d'Allemagne, un agenda commun pour faire respecter la souveraineté européenne, le droit international et favoriser la désescalade. Et je crois pouvoir dire que d'abord nous avons eu sans ambiguïté un message de soutien à l'égard de la Grèce et de Chypre. Message de solidarité, de soutien face aux provocations unilatérales, aux forages illégaux ou aux mouvements de menaces de la souveraineté d'État européen. En opposition de la Synode 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 de la de Στην Ελλάδα και την Κύπρο δεν είναι απλά μια έκφραση αλληλεγγύης. Είναι αναγνώριση του γεγονότος ότι πλέον εδώ πέρα διακυβεύονται στρατηγικά συμφέροντα για την ίδια την Ευρώπη. Ως προς την ανάγκη κοινή στρατηγικής και μέτρων, εφόσον είναι αδιαμφισβήτητο ότι οι ενέργειες αυτές της Άγκυρας συνιστούν παραβίαση του διεθνού δικαίου και του δικαίου της θάλασσας και στρέφονται σε βάρος της κυριαρχίας και των κυριαρχικών δικαιωμάτων δύο κρατών μελών της Ευρωπαϊκής Ένωσης, αλλά αν θέλετε και της Ευρωπαϊκής Ένωσης αυτής καθεαυτή. Με την κοινή διακήρυξη συμφωνήσαμε ότι θα αξιοποιήσουμε όλα τα μέσα στην διάθεση της Ευρωπαϊκής Ένωσης για να αντιμετωπίσουμε την τουρκική παραβιωτικότητα συμπεριλαμβανομένων που θέλουμε να απευχόμαστε Meanwhile, in Cyprus, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo held a series of meetings with the Cypriot leadership in the port city of Larnaca, during which he highlighted Washington's deep concern over Turkey's behavior in the eastern Mediterranean. We remain deeply concerned by Turkey's ongoing operations surveying for natural resources in areas over which Greece and Cyprus assert jurisdiction in the eastern Mediterranean. The Republic of Cyprus has the right to exploit its natural resources, including the right to hydrocarbons found in its territorial sea and its economic, exclusive economic zone. We also believe that the resources of Cyprus should be shared equitably among the Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots community. 
The visit by the top American diplomat comes at a time when the Turkish armed forces conducted a military drill in the northern part of Cyprus, which is under Ankara's control. Overseeing the drill, Turkish Defense Minister Hulusi Akal insisted that while Turkey is adamant on finding a political solution to tensions in the eastern Mediterranean, it remains determined to protect its interests. Siyasi çözümlerden yanayız, iyi komşuluk ilişkilerinden yanayız, anlaşmalara saygılıyız, herkesin hududuna saygılıyız, kimsenin toprağında gözümüz yok. Fakat bunun yanı sıra biz aynı zamanda kendi ülkemizin, kendi milletimizin de hak alakma menfaatlerini korumakla kollamakta son derece azimliyiz, kararlıyız, buna muhtediriz. Ne zamana kadar? Ölünceye kadar. It is important to mention that Turkey's seismic research vessel, Uruk Reis, withdrew yesterday from the disputed waters in the eastern Mediterranean, a move hailed by Greece as a first positive step in easing strenuous tensions. Nevertheless, Ankara's leadership immediately played down the significance of the move, saying the ship had returned to Turkey's shores as part of scheduled plans. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Venezuela in prayer for its salvation and peace, in addition to our ongoing prayers of course for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, as well as for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its economic ramifications worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tov and Shavuot Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.